Welcome to the iOS Media Library course. I'm Keith Welch and I'll be your instructor. For this course, media means pictures, music, and video. And these have all become a huge part of modern life. Just think about it, they're everywhere. You can think about YouTube and Vines and Instagram. Instagram is really a simple idea, isn't it? It's just photos, but it became a huge success. It's also a tremendous factor in social networking growth. Sure, Twitter had 140 characters, but now it has pictures and links to other media, so that really added to its popularity as well. And of course, Facebook has always had that kind of support. Media is also a major market feature for apps. Because people are so used to seeing media everywhere, they also like to see it in their apps as well, particularly the social networking apps, which are a major growth market. In this course, we'll demonstrate how to integrate media into your app. We'll also take a look at some options beyond the standard iOS methods. iOS has nice support for various media. It provides pickers for pictures and music and video, and also display for photos and video. But you may want your app to stand out and look different from the rest. So we'll take a little bit of a look at that. We'll take a look at some more advanced options and how to work with audio as well. In this course, we're going to be building up a media library app and we'll include a photo gallery that will be different from the normal iOS version. And we'll start with the standard iOS version, but then we'll do something a little bit more special. We'll also take a look at using the camera. And again, we'll begin with the standard, but then we'll be able to put an overlay on it and give it a little bit more of an advanced look. We'll also take a look at sharing photos in the social media. And we'll do that in a pretty simple way. And there's another course in social networking as well, so you might want to take a look at that after this if you're interested in that topic. And we'll record and play audio and video, of course. And then we'll take a look at accessing the media library, which is filtering it by query. For example, I may want to allow the user to search for a song by artist, or title, or perhaps album. And we want to be able to run those queries in a seamless manner and play the song that the user wants to hear. So as I mentioned, my name is Keith Welch, and I have 30 years in the industry, and that doesn't really prove anything except that I'm old enough to have 30 years in the industry. I do have 10 years in mobile, and that's a little bit of something. When I started out, my big choice was whether I should go with a Palm Pilot or a Pocket PC. I went with Pocket PC because I thought that Microsoft probably had a pretty good chance in the area. And they did. But it hasn't worked out so well for them of late. I also have 10 years in .NET. I started with the first beta in that as well. But mobile has moved on from Microsoft, and so did I. So I got involved in iOS and Android, and I use Xamarin and Mono for both, but I also use native code as well. Of course, Objective-C, which is what we're going to be using in this course for iOS. I also still do a little bit of Windows Mobile, but not the newer versions. And of course, the ASP.NET, WCF, and Windows form in my .NET background. As far as databases, we have the usual suspects. And in terms of languages, again, the usual suspects. Objective-C, Java for Android, C-sharp for Xamarin Mono and the other .NET technologies, VB on occasion, and JavaScript and jQuery, of course, for web pages. I'm the founder and owner of Mooseworks Software, LLC, and you can take a look at the website if you're interested in that. We specialize in custom app development and mobile developer tools. If you have any questions about the course, or anything else for that matter, you can reach me at keith at mooseworksoftware.com. So that said, let's move along with the course.